Today we are diving into the essential world of APT repositories, a crucial aspect of managing software on Ubuntu and Debian-based Linux distros. So without any delay, let's begin. Before I get into the details, let's understand the concept of APT repository list. It is a configuration file containing a compilation of repositories that APT accesses for software packages. These repositories offer a diverse array of software applications, updates, and security patches for your Linux system. Managing this list allows you to control which software is available for installation or update. APT relies on two key files, sources.list and sources.list.d files. These files house the URLs of software repositories determining where APT fetches those packages. The first one contains official repositories. You can enable or disable any additional repositories by simply using the terminal that edits the file automatically. The second one stores all the configuration file with .list extension. You can add any necessary repository to use the required software by utilizing a .list file. What makes up an APT repository entry? Well, each entry in the list carries crucial information. It specifies the repository location, release code name like Focal or Bionic, and sections specifying the types of packages available, that is main, restricted, universe, and multiverse. Now let's break down the general syntax found in sources.list file. At first, deb comes with binary and pre-compiled packages that are essential for most users. Next, deb source contains source code of the packages. The web address where the repository is hosted is denoted by the URL and the release code name represents the code name of the specific Ubuntu release version. Besides this, Ubuntu repositories are divided into four main sections. The main section contains officially supported open source software maintained by the Ubuntu community. Restricted is the proprietary software supported by Ubuntu, but not open source. Community maintained open source software is Universe, and Multiverse contains the proprietary or restricted software not supported by Ubuntu. Now let's get hands-on with managing APT repositories. First up, listing them. You can use the apt add repository command with its option list to view all the repositories. Ready to expand your repository collection? You can do that with the add apt repository command followed by debarch amd64 to indicate the architecture of Debian-based distro and then the URL of the repository, such as Chrome browser, and finally include the release code name, Jammy, for Ubuntu 22.04 within the main repository. To remove the repositories you no longer need, use the add apt repository command with the remove option. It's a quick and easy way to tidy up your list. After making changes to your repository list, it is essential to update the package list to ensure that the modifications take effect. This can be accomplished using the sudo apt update command. Before wrapping up, let's touch on two more topics, repository mirrors and repository proxies. The apt package manager often relies on connecting to official repositories for software installation and updates. However, during peak times, the central server might experience heavy traffic, slowing down your download speeds. That's where apt repository mirrors come into play. Repository mirrors are essentially duplicates of the official repositories. By connecting to the mirror closest to you, based on your geographical location, you can ensure faster downloads. And the benefits are clear. Faster downloads, reduced strain on primary servers, and increased reliability and availability of packages. Now let's talk about APT repository proxies, also known as APT proxies. 
These act as intermediaries between your system and remote repositories, functioning as a bridge to facilitate smoother communication. When your system makes a request, the proxy hands it over to the external repository for further processing. Using APT proxies brings several advantages to the table. First off, there is reduced bandwidth usage in environments with multiple Linux systems. Additionally, package installation and updates become faster thanks to local caching. And here's the kicker. You can have control over which packages are cached and its duration. And there you have it, the APT repository list demystified. If you find this video helpful, make sure to check the commands used here in the video description.